In this video, I demonstrate the danger to all road users from the proposed restriping plan for El Camino Real and why it is even more dangerous than the current scheme. To understand why the current scheme is difficult for cyclists to navigate, we'll begin with a trip over El Camino Real southbound, starting from the Stevens Creek Trail Junction. The cyclist comes to a complete stop at the Stevens Creek Trail Junction at a point of high conflict. Because motorists are not expecting a cyclist to join the traffic pattern, and the turn lane is not enforced by a solid white line, it is not possible for a cyclist to understand whether a motorist is about to turn where they need to enter the road. At this time, a motorist is accelerating to prepare to join Highway 85 southbound. The cyclist protects themselves and signals their intent to continue straight by occupying a portion of the lane. In this way, the cyclist makes themselves more visible and reduces the closure rate at the merge point between them and motorist traffic by enforcing that motorist traffic must explicitly merge into their lane in order to pass them and merge onto Highway 85 northbound. Finally, the cyclist continues to ride in the straight going lane, allowing space for traffic from Highway 85 northbound to join. There is a path for the cyclist to navigate this interchange safely, but it is not obvious either to the cyclist or the motorist. Because there is no indication for where a cyclist can position themselves to ride safely, motorists do not expect cyclists to be in these locations, leading motorists to believe that a cyclist is operating erratically. The cyclist completes the interchange in the straight-going lane, allowing traffic to turn right onto the Americana. Now let's take a look at how a cyclist navigates this interchange under the Caltrans plan. For the sake of brevity, we examine only the final on-ramp and off-ramp on El Camino Real southbound, but similar problems exist elsewhere in the design. In the Caltrans proposal, a cyclist is suggested to enter the right gutter of the road with striping, and their location is enforced with flexible delineators, also known as soft hit posts. The cyclist merges into traffic again less than 200 feet later, and the cyclist is expected to merge across an accelerating lane of traffic in a space of less than 50 feet. This merge happens when vehicle closure rates are at their highest point of the interchange. Similarly, as traffic from Highway 85 northbound merges onto El Camino Real, the merge happens this time in 30 feet, with flexible delineators restricting the cyclist from beginning the merge until they are already in the stream of traffic from Highway 85. These designs are inherently dangerous, more dangerous than those which already exist. These designs force conflict at the points of the highest closure rate of any point of the interchange. I urge Caltrans to reconsider this proposal, and I urge the state to consider the process by which this proposal came to light. The Bay Area has an incredible climate to enable human-powered and other low-carbon forms of transportation, and to squander it like this while endangering the lives of its residents would be a shame. 